we can start now with uh, engineer Tamer Asad from Photon Computing Company. Um, he will talk about optimization strategy for compute intensive systems, computational fluid dynamic case study. Engineer Tamer, Tamer, Fadl. Hi everyone, this is Tamer. This is Tamer Mahmoud from Poland Computing. Today we are presenting the optimization strategy for computing intensive system and talking about the Competition fluid dynamics case study. The object of this session is answering this question how to accelerate a compute intensive system in order to achieve some results, actually, impressive results, such as what you can see here. We have accelerated, or actually, we have managed to accelerate. The simulation of the fluid dynamic system. It took about 90 days natively um, uh, from machines, and we managed to accelerate that and optimize it to get accomplished in four hours, just four hours. Now, the program of the system actually will go like this. We have this introduction that will be uh, making a quick overview of about the high performance computing. I might be um, expecting some questions uh, about the high performance computing background. Then we'll be talking more specific, specifically about the uh, computational fluid dynamics. And we'll expose the sizing, the complexity, the optimization strategy we followed actually uh, in order to achieve these uh, optimization results. Then we'll be uh, discussing the solution approach and the implementation efficiency. I believe uh, Professor Walid has already uh, demonstrated some of the uh, results, the optimization results uh, we have achieved already. So let us begin with the high performance computing. What we do, what, what actually we require and we need to do when we have a computer intensive system. Um, we have a lot of hardware, modern hardware everywhere now. We have uh, CPUs, GPUs, many cores, uh, multiple processors, and other FPGAs, and, and so on. What we need to do is to have our software using and utilizing the uh, capabilities of the uh, hardware available now in the market. And in fact, this job, this gap, we are closing. This is what we do. We close this gap between the software performance and the hardware capabilities we need. And we are up, uh, utilizing these capabilities of modern hardware. It's always on the uh, software developer to do this. Now, let us talk about the parallel computing. Parallel computing. Modern hardware already have a number of cores, as we already mentioned now. We can think of this uh, left photo uh, when we have a number of um, cars actually uh, moving in serial, they have to go one by one, but in parallel, we can move like four cars, eight cars, and so on in parallel. So the result would be greater output, greater throughput. Now, when we talk about, when we are talking about the parallel processing, we can do some approaches. We can do some task parallelization on multi-core processors and many-core processing units as well. Uh, we can also do some something called data vectorization or data parallelization. Uh, we'll get to this uh, in a minute. And also we can do some compute load distribution on multiple nodes. We might have some cluster, uh, compute cluster or we might be running our application or our simulation on a number of other machines. Where it depends on the, you know, the, the tolerance of the uh, of the subject application. If we are talking about the uh, uh, multi-core processing only, we might be thinking of this uh, list photo. Uh, we have a six-core uh, CPU from uh, Intel Corporation. 
um, on the on the right side. This this demonstration actually presents and demonstrates how we can process number of elements, data elements, if I might say, uh, in parallel. In fact, we are demonstrating here what we are de demonstrating here is uh, number of tasks in parallel because uh, when we talk about data in parallel, we, we might be thinking more about the data parallelization. We have the Flint tax taxonomy uh, defining the uh, SIMD instruction, the SIMD single instruction, multiple data. Uh, modern CPUs such as Intel uh, processors actually uh, support and provide a, a, a vectorization using some vectorization, vectorization extension. Uh, we have the AVX. Uh, 512 or the advanced vector extension. It supports and it enables processing uh, 512 bits in parallel. These 512 bits actually could be presented by a number of methods, but what we are more interested about here is the floating point uh, data types. Uh, so those 1512 can actually uh, result in processing 16 floats in parallel. Now, if we are combining those capabilities, those uh, parallelization methods, uh, let us take this example combining just the uh, task parallelization and the data parallelization or the vectorization. Uh, we have those six cores on the CPU and we have those 16 floating point numbers uh, per core. So the result would be uh, a 96 floating point operation or floating point number operated or processed uh, every time in parallel. Uh, this is this alone actually uh, could give us a lot of acceleration. Um, if we are calculating this indirect, uh, I mean directly, just uh, we might be expecting some 100x speed up, but of course in practice it doesn't go this way because we have a, we have a lot of other considerations and performance as aspects. We, um, we'll get to uh, how to move the data from memory portion to another. Right now, uh, one very important aspect about the uh, performance is the memory. And in order to um, talk about the memory, we have to uh, understand some. Um, memory character characteristics. Uh, we might be uh, interested in learning about the location of the memory, the capacity of the memory we are using in the system, <clears throat> and the number, I mean, the unit of transport, uh, how many uh, bits or bytes are is it, uh, transferring uh, per, per second. Also, the access method, is it trended, is it serial or semi-random and also the performance, the how many cycles, how many processor cycles uh, does it take to retrieve some data from the, uh, the uh, specific memory uh, and we will get to memory types actually in the next slide. Um, also we have the uh, physical type of the memory. Is it a semiconductor? Is it a magnetic surface uh, or optical? Um, optical service, um, we have a lot of, uh, we have a, a wide variety actually of uh, uh, memory uh, physical type. Uh, also, we, we, do, we do consider the physical characteristics. Is it a volatile memory or a non-volatile memory? Um, and also the organization, uh, is it a reasonable or a non erasable memory? All those uh, characteristics are important and must be defined uh, and aligned to our application. Uh, when, when we target a specific solution, we have to understand those requirements and we have to study each of them in detail. Now, let us consider some additional details and maybe uh, some demonstration of um, sample, uh, sample uh, numbers about the uh, memory and what memory types we are talking about, what memory types we would be considering, and specifically for this uh, implementation, the computational free dynamic. Hello? 
انت عايز نطلع بره بقى ايه ما انت قاعد اهو فين؟ قاعد فين؟ قاعد فين انا؟ فين؟ ما تقعدي اقعد ازاي هنا؟ اسمعني اسمعني في الميكروفون دكتور عمرو دكتور وليد سامعني؟ ايه في الميكروفون اللي شغال دلوقتي في المحاضرة دلوقتي طيب تمام هندخلك النكست اوكي احنا سامعينك كويس كده ماشي اتفضل يا مهندس معلش مهندس معلش ثانك يو بروفيسور وليد اند Now, uh, continuing our discussion about the um, memory types and memory specifications, uh, we might be, um, I, I believe everyone knows about the uh, stored uh, hardest drive or uh, the permanent storage, and we might be um, uh, thinking of number of uh, uh, permanent storage, actually, and this storage, we, we know the ha uh, hardest drive, the solid state drives, and the non-volatile, or the NVM uh, storage as well. Also, we know the, we know about the main memory, the RAM of the uh, computer of any computer system, and uh, it's always based on the installation of the, uh, I mean, the capacity of this of the disk store, uh, of the storage drive and the memory are always uh, depending on the installation. But we might be always what, uh, asking questions and actually get very interested in. Defining the uh, suitable bandwidth and suitable capacity of uh, each memory set, each memory we are using for the RAM, for example, we we might be encountering some uh, 95 gigabytes per second data transfer rate. Uh, this is important, actually, in this computational fluid dynamics simulation. Uh, it means a lot, and it means a lot of uh, speed up or delay. It depends on how we are utilizing those uh, transfer rate, those memory bandwidth. Uh, we also have those uh, cache memory uh, levels within, inside this, the processing unit, the CPU, and any, in fact, any processing unit would have some uh, memory, uh, cache memory levels. Um, usually we, we, we have the level three, level two, and level one cache memory, and we'll be talking a bit more about this uh, next. And before we move on, uh, we might be interested in having a um, practical look. This is a screenshot uh, of a, a memory benchmark uh, demonstrating some speed for an octa core Intel 4i9 processor. Uh, we have for the L1, we have some um, two terabytes of. Uh, that transfer rate for the reading and uh, almost half this rate for the writing. Um, the L2 actually tends to be larger and um, slower. And the same goes uh, downstream all the way to uh, the, 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 memory, the main memory, the system uh, RAM. And about the distribution of the uh, uh, cache level, Actually, each core has its own uh, level one cache memory, and uh, it has access to level two cache memory. Some architectures, some processing unit architectures, do share the L2 uh, level two cache memory uh, between uh, two cores, for example. But most probably, we will find level three of the cache memory will uh, it is shared uh, between all the processing cores. Um, when you want to consider the uh, and take an account actually the uh, speeds and the size uh, of each memory, you will be uh, thinking this way. Uh, we have the RAM having the largest size, uh, but the slowest T uh, compared to the cache memory levels. Uh, and we are going this way from the RAM, L3, L2, L1, uh, from down to top now um, when we are accessing some piece of data uh, located in the memory uh, in the RAM actually system memory uh, we we need to transfer and deliver that piece of memory let us consider this yellow particle in, in the right side uh, we need to transfer this uh, yellow particle 
it's a piece of data. We want to transfer it all the way from the RAM to the CPU going upward. Uh, it has to go through the L3 and the L2 and the L1 caches, and then would be transferred into the CPU registers in order to get processed. Uh, by getting processed, actually, we mean some sort of uh, calculation. It could be an add, multiply, or any any mathematical or logical operation. Now, uh, talking more about the memory dynamics, we actually need to um, get to some advanced topics, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible and quick as possible for this talk. Um, we, need to con we need to consider some important and essential concepts. We have the cache line, uh, basically what it would we might be uh, asking this question in order to uh, realize what the cache line is. We might be uh, thinking about the data transaction transaction side, um, the container that uh, that will be uh, used to transfer uh, some data, and we will get to this uh, in the next slide. Also, we have the locality of it and answering the uh, or thinking about the cache data temporal temporal and spatial. Uh, present, um, and we will get to this concept as well uh, in, the in, in the following slide. Also, we have a, cat, a cache memory head and cache map, and the CPU stall. Uh, actually, this is important, and we will be discussing this right, right away. Now, let us talk about the cache line. As we as we just mentioned, we we do need to um, be aware and actually um, make the best utilization of the cache line. We have a specific capacity of a cache line. We can think of this as uh, a transfer, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, a transportation bus. Uh, any transportation bus uh, has has its own specific capacity, for example, a 20, uh, 20 seats or 40 seats. When we are transferring number of people, that's, I mean, that number is exceeding the uh, the bus capacity. We uh, we will be enforced to transfer all the people. Uh, for example, we have 80 people. We will be forced to transfer 80 people on two transactions using the 40 seats bus. This is exactly what the cash line does and how it goes. Uh, if we have two pieces of data uh, scattered uh, on the main memory or a, a specific memory memory level, and we want to transfer that data uh, from uh, from this memory level to uh, to, to the next level, uh, we'll be following the cache line, assuming he, that this cache line has this capacity for units of uh, of data, and we have those uh, yellow and brown. Uh, Pieces, pieces of, uh, of, of data distributed on the uh, on the left side, uh, following this way. This means we will be uh, transferring those pieces, those two pieces, over two transactions. Uh, on the other side, on the right hand, we see uh, those two pieces arranged in a different approach, and they are sequentially arranged. Actually, so the cache line. It is cache line friendly. It is possible to transfer those two pieces of data uh, over one transaction rather than two transactions. This is the difference, and this is what actually matters when we think about the cache line, how to access the data. We 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 have to always think about the uh, access pattern, data access pattern. On the left side, this is called strided data uh, data access pattern. And on the right side, we have that sequential data access pattern. It makes a lot of difference and has a lot of impact on the processing speed because the processor won't be able to process any data, uh, any piece of data actually, without being transferred to the processor at the first at the first place. Now, uh, talking more about the memory dynamics and. We have to consider also those other three um, concepts, essential concepts. In fact, there are a number of other concepts, a lot of other concepts, but 
we are make, trying to make things easier. And, and as I mentioned, we have just we're just trying to make a common background and uh, having a quick overview so we can go on on this uh, discussion. Uh, talking about uh, the locality locality of re reference and the cache cache hit and the cache mass and also the CPU flow. Let us take it step by step or one by one. <coughs> on the left side, uh, on L1 cache, uh, assuming that we are processing at, uh, or the processor is required some specific piece of data. Uh, and that piece of data, the processor will be searching and looking first in the level one cache memory. And then if the processor didn't find that piece of data, we are talking about the yellow box here, uh, the processor didn't find that piece of data in the L1 cache. Uh, this means, or it actually um, pronounced as a, ca a cache mess. Uh, the processor is trying to fix that piece of data and didn't find it in that cache memory, so it has to look it up on the next level and the next level and so on. Um, in fact, this switching process, this um, cache mess, uh, is very expensive and it results in what we call a, uh, a CPU stall. The CPU stop processing all the um, Operations or mathematical, mathematical operations and so on. In fact, the program the program just stops until the required data is retrieved from uh, where it is. So we always need to have that data available as possible uh, at the nearest level of cache uh, for processing in order to avoid uh, the CPU stop. Now we have talked about the um, locality on the CPU store, the cache hit, uh, the cache miss, I mean. Uh, on the right side, we will be uh, seeing the happy part of the uh, of this part, I, I mean, the cache hit. When, with, when the CPU is looking for that yellow piece of data and it found it on the level one of cache. So this is the best, the best case we can, we can have. In fact, it would never happen all the time because we have to uh, load some data from the memory and maybe loading some data from uh, storage. But what we what we are trying to uh, achieve, actually, the objective of of this uh, part of the presentation, the memory dynamics and the uh, uh, locality and the cache and cache, what we are trying to achieve is having our data arranged and available as much as possible to the CPU for processing without any interruption, without stalling. What we, uh, in other definition, we, we call it stream processing. So the processor will always ha have the data ready for processing without waiting for the data retrieval as much as possible. Now, uh, we have other uh, performance aspects uh, we might be um, forced to consider actually when we are approaching a computer intensive system. Uh, we have the system internal buffers and we have the storage technologies and the network technologies as well. We might, uh, the network technology actually would be uh, of significant important uh, if we are have, uh, if we are running a distributed uh, model, uh, a, a cluster computer, for example, or a good computer, and that uh, that compu uh, com computation actually uh, involves a lot of uh, memory memory transfer between nodes to um, to get the, 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 the entire process accomplished. Uh, the memory uh, transfer rates actually, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the uh, network transfer rate would uh, really impact uh, every cycle of the processing at, at that case. Uh, fortunately, um, or actually, uh, yeah, uh, fortunately, we do have a, a lot of uh, inter, uh, network networking fabrics uh, that support some higher speed uh, rather, um, than before, than some years ago. But still, uh, whenever possible, we need to uh, have uh, acceleration. We, we have to consider 
uh, highest number, uh, the highest transfer rates for the net uh, networking technology, the networking fabric we are using, and mm, try to avoid it when possible. And also for the storage, if 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 you could, I mean, for any project, if you uh, if that if that requirement uh, involves a lot of data data loading from the uh, from the storage, uh, we try to do some loading. Um, I mean, we try to load the data from the storage. Uh, the least time of of, uh, of, 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 of the, I mean, the minimum times of number of uh, loading from the storage, that would be the better for the performance. Uh, because the storage is not that fast, actually it's uh, considerably slow compared to other memory um, you might be using for uh, as as we have seen the system memory, the RAM, and the cache level, uh, cache memory level uh, three and two and one. Uh, the storage is actually uh, quite slower compared to those uh, memory memory systems. Uh, now, I would love to uh, receive some questions if you have and answer them in order to go on and make sure that we are all ready to discuss. The competition through the implementation. OK, thank you, engineer table for your nice tool. Any questions from uh, professors here? How about the Senegal man on the top of that? I'm just happy to ask for the man to stand on the end of the whole year. So I'm sorry about the other one. I'm going to be able to push for a more of a way. زي زي الميتنج ده كده فيجوال ورك يعني وتليفون فاحنا خدنا وقت كبير جدا عشان نعمل اوتمايزيشن للشغل بتاعنا زي ما قلت قبل كده في في البرزنتيشن اللي قدمه دكتور زافر احنا كنا بناخد مثلا في 512 حوالي 400 دقيقه يعني حوالي ست ساعات ولا حاجه عشان نحسب تايم ستيب واحده هم طبعا وصلها ل لثواني الستيب الواحده ثواني فال 200 دول مثلا بياخدوا معاه فرق بينه وبينه ساعات يعني حوالي 80% ريدكشن للتايم الحسابات على الرغم ان احنا لسه عندنا عيب ان هو الفورماتد فايل ده الاوت بوت بياخد وقت هو ممكن لما يحل المشكله ديت هياخد وقت اقل كمان ال 1024 تكعيب زي ما كنت بتكلم دلوقتي مش عارفين نحسبها اصلا على الجهاز اللي عندي هو بدا يحسبها بدات تاخد 12 ساعه الخطوه الواحده عشان تطلع بصراحه بالنسبه لي يعني انا بالنسبه لي يعني على الاجهزه اللي عندي ما كنتش متوقع ان نحسب ال 1024 ال 512 اللي جربتها قبل كده بتاخد وقت رهيب يعني يعني كانت مثلا ممكن توصل معايا 50 يوم لو انا مشيت بحاجه بين اللي هو الانر لوب ده ممكن تاخد مني 50 يوم متواصل الجهاز يكون شغال 50 يوم متواصل فطبعا يعني يوزليس قوي ان انا اشتغل 50 يوم دلوقتي احنا حسبنا 24 ان انا لسه هحاول ارسمها دلوقتي خدت ثلاث ايام بس يعني فرق رهيب شوف ثلاث ايام من من رقم يعني 60 يوم ولا بتاع رقم كبير يعني فانا بشكرك يا باشمهندس بس احنا عايزين نفهم في ورقه واحده او ورقتين الحاجات اللي عملتها بالظبط عشان تعمل الاوبتمايزيشن اللي عملته في الكودينج والاوبتمايزيشن اللي عملته في الهاردوير ببساطه كده للناس المستمعه اللي معانا شكرا ليك دكتور وليد آه طبعا احنا كنا ساعدنا بالشغل في البروجكت ده وانا شخصيا كنت سعيد بالشغل معاك في البروجكت ده آه احنا دلوقتي هنتكلم يعني اكتر على الفلويدنامك سيميليشن الامبلمنتيشن عملناه <تصفيق> بعد الانترودكشن عملناها على الهاي بيرفورمنس كمبيوتر كان ضروري نعملها عشان نقدر آه ما يبقاش عندنا آه مفاهيم مش واضحه آه فخليني اكمل من هنا وبعد كده ناخد كمان اسئله ان شاء الله في النهايه. ماشي يا باشمهندس كمل اتفضل اتفضل شكرا. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Professor Walid. And uh, now we are getting to uh, the computational fluid dynamic, uh, the implementation actually, and our optimization. Uh, first of all, I believe uh, Professor Walid has uh, introduced introduced the uh, the model, the lattice Boltzmann model, uh, utilized and uh, adopted 
to implement this uh, fluid dynamic simulation. <clears throat> From our point of view, uh, the computational point of view, actually, uh, we need to know some. Uh, uh, we, need, we need to have some orientations on this um, on this model and the implementation. Um, and when we are when we when we are simulating some um, samples, a cubic sample, uh, we ha we have to count number of, of nodes, number of uh, of elements actually uh, in, in each sample, and we have to calculate uh, the complete volume of, of data uh, at each scale. Uh, we might be looking at this table. Uh, for uh, for example, the uh, 256 k, uh, the number of particles involved in this, in this sample cube, uh, 256 by 256 by 256, uh, we have to um, multiply those. Uh, I mean, discount by the floating point uh, size, data type size, uh, size and byte. I mean, and it is. Uh, four, four bytes, and then we have uh, for the lattice Boltzmann model, we have 19 directions. Each direction actually is presented by uh, a cube of the same uh, scale. So we have 19 cube and additional three cube actually uh, for the dimension uh, because we are open in, uh, in 3D, and also uh, some additional e value hold TQ or value holders for hold uh, I mean to hold values the value holders cube uh, the total number uh, the total amount of data actually is 1600 megabytes of data for the 256 this is um, it's not that much of data but there is another issue the data transfer. In fact, uh, our discussion about the memory transfer speeds, the bandwidth, and uh, the main memory capacity, the memory memory bandwidth, and and so on. All those discussions were uh, of super importance actually for this uh, this part. Now we have the uh, the simulation following the LBM model. Uh, it's both about 250 trips uh, uh, for the entire data set. 250 trips for the entire data set. I mean, for the 1600 uh, megabytes of data, we, we need to transfer those 1600 megabytes 250 times from the memory to the CPU. And this happens for the uh, 256 scale only. Uh, I have to get back to the previous slide from for a moment to uh, discuss this this part, the most tried part, the uh, 124, uh, the 1024 K. Uh, we have um, uh, a complete amount of 100 gigabytes of data, and we need, for this example, the 1024, we need to transfer those 100 gigabytes 250 times from the memory, the system memory, to the CPU, to get processed and have our uh, simulation moving on. In fact, this is for a single step, a single time step. So we might be repeating those 250 steps for 10,000 uh, 10, times, maybe uh, uh, 20,000 times. It depends on uh, the target simulation and the length actually of the simulation uh, we are trying to implement. Now, we need to think, uh, in fact, more deep about what happens here. Those 250 as, as we have discussed, we have uh, the RAM actually of uh, larger capacity uh, compared to uh, cache memory levels, the L3 and the L2. Uh, if we are taking this 1600 uh, megabytes as an example, we need, uh, and we have uh, the process used uh, for this implementation. In fact, it was implemented on an uh, uh, HP servers, 
uh, HPE servers uh, with cooperation from uh, HPE Egypt. And also, uh, we, tend, uh, we managed to uh, have a good acceleration on, on those devices and on, tel, on Intel CPU, also uh, with some support from Intel Corporation uh, in the United States and also in Intel Corporation in Egypt. Uh, we got those hardware and we got to, in fact, there was a constraint, there was a limitation in uh, the hardware uh, uh, we were able to uh, acquire for this simulation. So we needed to uh, perform a lot of optimization and make the best utilization of those uh, available hardware. Now, getting back to uh, what we were using, I mean the hardware, the six core uh, uh, Intel Xeon processor, uh, second generation, uh, it had, <clears throat> it had, it has uh, an eight megabytes of L3 uh, cache memory. Now we need to transfer those 1600 megabytes uh, through those uh, eight megabytes of L3 cache memory. It means uh, a number of 200 transactions. Those 200 transactions will be actually uh, we need to perform this, the pro this, the processing. Um, the computer, the computer system will need to perform those 200 transactions for every single trip of those 250 trips we need for the calculation of the uh, LBM. Now it's getting large and the data transfer numbers are getting huge and we are actually counting in thousands of megabytes and thousands of uh, uh, data trips. Um, and of course, we will be counting more and more for larger scales. In fact, we we still need to count uh, for uh, I mean, uh, do some trip count calculation, that transfer calculations for uh, other memory levels, because the processor is not going to access the L3 directly. It has to access the L1, so we have to have those similar calculations for L for the L1 and also similar calculations for L2. Uh, the result is uh, quite huge and we need to have some uh, optimization approach. Uh, if we are considering uh, a parallelization and vect uh, vectorization approach, direct uh, optimization uh, by distributing our compute load on multi-core, six cores and the AVX, registers, AVX512 registers, so we will be, um, we might be expecting some 100x speed up, but the truth is, um, it's not going to happen <laughs> because of that memory management thing. In fact, uh, we might, we might encounter some slowing uh, from the original serial implementation when we just distribute the compute load on uh, parallel uh, processing unit because each each core each processing core actually would require its own data so we might be uh, facing intensive uh, data loading and eviction from the memory uh, by each core from I mean uh, if we are considering l3 for for this example so Direct parallelization, direct vectorization is not really going to help a lot in this case, even though the hardware capabilities are there, but we are act actually we need to know how to utilize that. A successful optimization, pro optimization process, uh, as I mentioned, should follow uh, an optimization strategy. Uh, our optimization strategy uh, actually goes this way. Uh, we identify the uh, actual actual challenges of, of the system and then we specify the target uh, solution approaches and then we start tackling the challenges at the earliest or on the left side actually we we might might be saying this uh, the top level of the scientific domain we are working on for example if we are uh, solving as a physical um, uh, physical problem uh, then that physical 
a problem will will involve some um, mathematical approaches and then those mathematical approaches will get translated into some algorithms uh, in the computational level and those algorithms algorithms need to get implemented uh, and for the implementation we'll be considering number of uh, technologies um, I mean, there are there are a lot of technologies, Co uh, programming languages, uh, parallelization uh, methods, uh, and vectorization approaches, and so on. And also, we need to consider the hardware. Do we need to, or our uh, does our uh, implementation uh, is it going to get benefit from specific hardware? A multi-core CPU uh, and, and or a many core uh, processing unit, a GPU, for example, or an FPGA. Uh, we, need, we need to ask those questions and we need to do those calculations carefully. And then after uh, moving downstream, we need to verify our solution. We need to make sure that we, uh, actually we need to uh, do a lot of things. <laughs> In fact, we need to make sure that uh, those results after the migra migration from the standard implementation to the uh, optimized implementation, uh, the results are correct. The implementation, the optimization, um, the optimization process implemented uh, is really efficient. So let us consider this project, the uh, computational fluid dynamics implementation uh, following the uh, lattice Boltzmann method. Uh, and also applying our optimization strategy. We went this way. We had to identify the challenges and the challenges for the LBM, as we have discussed already. Uh, we have a great data volume and we have a huge data transfer load. How do we solve this? How do we <laughs> tackle those challenges? Uh, we need to. We have already defi defined those targets, so uh, and we have approached uh, this this high, uh, this structure uh, at the top level, the uh, lattice Boltzmann uh, model level. Uh, the first thing we ha uh, we we managed to have is uh, reducing uh, the number of data trips from 250 down to uh, 120 trips for each time step. It has a lot of impact and actually um, also work on this level. We, we managed to do a modification and some sort of uh, transformation for the data layout in order to have a, 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 a lot of uh, concepts. Actually, as we have just mentioned in the previous uh, portion of the, of the session, um, the data locality, the um, uh, cache line, and and a lot of uh, many other many other concepts, actually important concepts. Uh, we managed to have a, a a data layout that is friendly to the cache line, uh, the cache memory. The um, uh, it reduces the cache misses. Um, dramatically actually it reduces the cache message and also that management that data layout uh, allowed us to uh, perform other optimizations on other levels on the computational level and on um, the implementation levels we were able to do a lot of optimizations so the results were like this and also i believe uh, professor walid has demonstrated some results similar results or maybe the same results earlier on a previous session. Um, for the 32 scale, we managed to reduce the time for every every step, every processing step from 5 milliseconds to 585 uh, microseconds. And as he mentioned, just mentioned during the uh, uh, questions, portion actually uh, the 120 uh, 1024 uh, was not even applicable previously uh, by uh, standard implementation now we were able to provide this in 12 seconds and uh, and on some 
implementation. We, uh, I mean, there are differences, some differences executing this uh, simulation from one machine to another, from a PC to a server platform and so on. Um, but anyway, we we tend we managed to have a great acceleration and great optimization, and we are in fact really happy uh, that we uh, were able to help them and help the research team in this project. And actually, we are happy also uh, of our achievement uh, of this optimization and proving our optimization uh, strategy really helped. Thank you very much for your, uh, your time and for, uh, and for listening. And please do feel free to ask me questions and I would be happy to answer them. Uh, thank you, Engineer Tamer, for your nice talk and uh, nice application, of course. <laughs> uh, any questions? Any questions from our colleagues here? اوكي أه بص يا باشمهندس انا عايزك تتكلم بالعربي مثلا السوليوشن انت كنت عارضه بالانجليزي ده تقول لنا ملخصه كده بالعربي السلايد اللي بتاع التالي طيب حاضر اي واحده يعني عملنا كذا وكذا عشان نبقى فاهمين يعني ايه اللي عملته في الكودينج وايه اللي حصل في الهاردوير طيب ارجع على البرزنتيشن ماشي ارجع لها السلايد دي حلوه بس خليك معايا يا دكتور معلش عشان اعرف اي سلايد تقصدها. السلايد اللي فيها الاوبتمازيشن سوليوشن كاتب انت الاوبتمازيشن سوليوشن استراتيجي بتاعتك. دي ولا اه هي معروفه طيب لحظه خليني اتاكد هي ظاهره. كده ظهر اه في واحده قبلها بقى انت عامل سوليوشن اوبتمازيشن سوليوشن ايوه هي دي سوليوشن ابروتش ايوه هي دي لا ابتدى كان فيها سوليوشن ابروتش بتاع هنا ايوه هنا بقى فعايزين دي مثلا كده الخطوات عشان نفهم ايه اللي حصل بالظبط في ال في في الهاردوير وفي ال... وفي الكودينج نفسه وفي اللابس بوكس مان 1 2 3 4 كده بحيث انا كمان عايز افهم يعني. طيب طيب اول حاجه احنا زي ما حكينا خليني ارجع سلايد واحده لورا. عملنا اوبتمايزيشن استراتيجي دي احنا كفورم احنا لما عندنا مشكله من النوع ده اول حاجه بنروح نشتغل ازاي هنشتغل عليها ده سؤال مهم جدا هنبدا من فين؟ الاوبتمايزيشن زي ما حكينا ممكن لو عملنا باراليزيشن او عملنا ديستريبيوشن للكمبيوت لود بتاعتنا على ملتي كور عملنا كمان فيكتوريزيشن النتيجه ممكن تبقى اسرع حاجه بسيطه وممكن تبقى ابطا في الحقيقه في اوقات عشان المشكله في الحاله اللي احنا فيها دي هي مشكله ميموري اكثر منها مشكله كمبيوت هي مشكله ميموري في في الكيس دي بمعنى اول اول خطوه احنا محتاجين نحدد ايه التشالنج ايه المشكله الحقيقيه زي ما حكينا هي هي ميموري بروبلم ميموري باوند بروبلم راذر ذان كومبيوت باوند بروبلم مش المشكله في سرعه البروسس المشكله في سرعه الميموري والنقل الداتا من الرام للكاش ميموري ليفلز اللي حكينا عليها ليفل 3 ليفل 2 ليفل 1 طيب لما حددنا المشكله دي يبقى ده اللي احنا عايزين نشتغل عليه مش عايزين نعمل باراليزيشن على قد ما احنا عايزين نقلل الميموري ترانسفير ترانزاكشن عايزين نقلل ال amount of memory transfer كمان uh, عايزين نحسن الميموري ترانسفير ما بين كل ليفل وتاني بمعنى انا هضيع وقت كتير دايما لو انا بنقل كل الداتا من ال من الرام لغايه السي بي يو مع كل مع كل سايكل مع كل كالكوليشن لو انا بعمل كاشينج 
يبقى عندي الداتا افيلبل في الليفل 1 كاش البروسيسور هيقدر يبروسس الليفل 1 كاباسيتي دي حوالي 32 كيلو بايت هيقدر يبروسس دول مره واحده من غير ما يستنى يعمل ستول سي بي يو ستول ويستنى لغايه ما يبقى في داتا ريتريفل من المين ميموري وي هاف تو فيل يعني بقصد لازم نملى ليفل 3 ليفل 2 ليفل ليفل 1 بترتيب مناسب يقلل الداتا ريتريفل من المين ميموري للسي بي يو على قد ما ينفع نبقى دايما بنأكسس داتا من نيرست ليفل اوف كاش دي الخطوه الاساسيه ده الاوبجيكتيف الاساسي بقيه الاوبتمزيشن بنت عليه خليني اتاكد كده لغايه كده الكلام في اسئله في الحته دي ولا نقدر نكمل لا كده تمام باشمهندس ماشي اتفضل طيب ال ال لما حددنا الاوبجيكتيف بتاعنا او عملنا عملنا كده يعني دلوقتي بالنسبه لللاتس بولتس من ميدل الموديل هو احنا في عندنا زي ما حكينا عدد التيوب بتاعت الدايركشنز دي مش هنقدر نغير فيها. الداتا هولدرز خليني ارجع كمان سلايد واحده لورا. اثنين ثلاثه سلايد. احنا قلنا عندنا الداتا كيوب 19 كيوب للدايركشنز ثلاثه للدايركشنز و ثلاثة uh, value holders كانوا نسميهم uh, uh, square و uh, row مش فاكر في حاجة كمان few uh, things كنا دول لو نقدر نقللهم على قد ما ينفع في الحقيقة احنا السيرفر اتش بي اي سيرفر اللي احنا استخدمناه uh, حطينا الميموري بتاعته uh, 96 uh, جيجا بايت رام uh, لو احنا كان لسه عندنا نفس الامانت اوف داتا ال 1024 ما كانش هينفع يشتغل على الـ على السيرفر ده او هنضطر كان يتعرض للهارد درايف مع كل كالكوليشن طبعا نتيجه كانت هتبقى اضعاف الوقت بدل ما احنا دلوقتي فكان لازم نقلل الداتا فوليوم بالكامل عشان يقدر يفت جوه ال 96 جيجا بايت او ميموري بالشكل ده بقينا بنشتغل داتا من ميموري بس خليني ارجع هنا كمان على كمل لما قللنا الداتا فوليوم وكمان حسنا او بقينا عايزين عارفين ان احنا عايزين نقلل عدد الميموري ترانزاكشن قلل الميموري ترانزاكشن بين الرام والكاش ليفل ده خلانا نقدر نشتغل ونفكر هنا في ال بي ام موديل غيرنا شويه احنا عندنا الستاندرد برزنتيشن لاتس بولت موديل بيعمل ثلاثه فانكشن فيلوسيتي ستريمنج في كوليجن احنا في الحقيقه ضمينا الفانكشنز دي شويه مع بعض عملنا خلينا نقول بال يعني اللغه الرياضيه عملنا اختزال لشويه خطوات عشان الهدف بتاعنا كان انه لو في داتا يعني بقت لودد في السي بي في الميموري في الكاش ميموري والسي بي بيشتغل عليها احنا نحاول نستخدمها اكبر عدد مرات قبل ما نرجعها للميموري للمين ميموري ونرجع نعمل لودن ليها في النكست ستيب او في كونسيكونس الداتا ريوز دي كان في الكونسيبت بتاع الداتا لوكاليتي كنا حكينا عليه في الجزء الاول من السيشن ده فرق كبير جدا بالنسبه لنا بس عشان نعمله كان في حاجه مهمه جدا لازم نعملها نخلي نغير الداتا لاي اوت الداتا مترتبه ازاي جوه الميموري ده السؤال المهم وده غيرنا فيه شويه احنا الستاندرد امبلمنتيشن كان على او معمول ب فورترون لو احنا عندنا اري 2 دي اري هيكون 
الكولون ميجر تناقشنا طبعا في الجزء ده انا ودكتور وليد اكثر من مره طيب كولون ميجر معناها انه لما انا باخد بروح اكسس الاري بتاعتنا فانا هاخد اول اليمنت من اول كولوم او رو بعدين اروح اول اليمنت ثاني رو طيب احنا امبلمنتيشن بتاعنا عملناه تكنولوجي مختلفه بقينا محتاجين نعمل اكسس مختلف والترتيب بتاع الداتا كمان مختلف بدل ما انا بروح اكسس 1024 1024 مليار اليمنت مليار فلوت وكل كالكوليشن ممكن هجيب شويه اليمنت من نير لوكيشن وبعدين هروح اجيب مجموعه اليمنت من فار لوكيشن ده بيبطئ كل حاجه بيهارم ال برنسبل اوف لوكاليتي ال كاش لاين افشنسي لازم كل ده نحاول نقلله نمانج الرينج داتا في الميموري ده اللي بنقصده بالداتا لاي اوت تو جيت بيتر رينج ان ميموري ان اوردر تو الاو فيردر اوبتمايزيشن اند ذن نقدر uh, كمان نطبق زي ما حكينا افشنت باراليزيشن اند فيكتورايزيشن ده بسرعه كده ايه اللي عملناه يا دكتور ثانك يو جينيت بروفيسور ازاوا دو يو هاف اني كويشن Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for an interesting talk. I understand the importance of the cash flow in high-performance high computing. So the, my question is, uh, if we find a bug or if we if we add some uh, um, subroutines to the original program, is it easy? So sometimes the optimized optimized code is fast, but some but sometimes it's difficult to be readable for the programmers. So is it, 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 is it easy to fix or modify the optimized, optimized code? Okay, so uh, I think, um, well, th uh, first of all, thank you very much, Professor, for uh, your question. And let me just verify your question. The first part is about debugging and if we are encountering some bug in the code. And the second mm -hmm. part is uh, if, we, if we want to modify the current implementation, how easy it is or how yes. feasible it is, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, for the first part, the uh, ease of uh, debugging um, in case we are encounter, encountered a uh, bug. Um, for such systems, actually, uh, we need to have some um, innovative methods for debugging. Mm. Uh, let me speak. Let me speak this way. We might be uh, implementing uh, uh, and utilizing. In fact, we might be running. A known data set and uh, have a, have the result uh, uh, repeated uh, or I mean comparing the final result uh, mm. with some known result. So, for example, in the, this case, actually happened a uh, number of times in this implementation mm. where I asked Professor Wally to provide uh, some uh, pre-calculated data set and then. We, we needed to uh, provide the same result. And w as long as we were not providing the s exact same result, then we know that we are having a bug or we are not really uh, running correctly uh, the, the calculation. This is one approach. Of course, there are a lot of other approaches, but for this specific case, uh, we follow this met method uh, sometimes. Um, let me say for, um, Another system, for example, we, we, we had some real time processing. Uh, in fact, it was about uh, video processing and video frames and so on. Uh, we came up with some generic frame mm -hmm. in order to validate uh, each frame, um, uh, the order of each frame and uh, the, the specification of each out of frame uh, mm -hmm. uh, of the video pipeline. So uh, one of the methods actually is running um, the simulation or the, comp uh, the system we are trying to debug uh, for, for, I mean, for hard, for those hard to debug systems uh, is to um, run some pre-known result, uh, result data 
and try to narrow the difference between the, uh, the results we have, the false data we have at the moment, uh, toward the correct data we have, we already have from previous calculation. This is one approach. Mm -hmm. Also, also there are other approaches such as um, statistical approaches actually are quite uh, useful and in, in similar in, the, in these cases. For example, if we are um, expecting uh, a graph line that's rising uh, mm. by time, and we have at a specific moment of time, the graph is dropping or we have some uh, spikes, then we know we have a specific uh, bug and we can really define and um, actually do catch that bug um, and we we might be able to reproduce the problem because we know the frame um, the boundaries of that uh, bug where 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 did it happen and when did it happen so uh, we, we 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 always need to narrow our uh, possibilities and mm. find out uh, with as i mentioned innovative approaches uh, narrow the possibilities in order to locate and identify the exact problem we have in our code. Mm. This mm. is the debugging. Um, is this uh, this is the first part? Yeah, uh, we have the second part of uh, modification of this this implementation. Um, yes, it is <coughs> it is quite modifiable, and actually we are already sort of getting ready for uh, additional. Um, additional implementation, additional development of this project. Mm -hmm. As I uh, had a discussion with Professor Woody, he wanted to uh, do some enhancement and some uh, apply some additions also on the calculation. Mm -hmm. So yes, we can uh, we can really apply a, a modification quickly because well. Let let me get back to uh, this optimization strategy. Uh, actually. Um, we know we, where the optimization happened, and mm. we were actually aware of, of how to uh, to apply a specific optimization. In fact, at the first level, the lattice Boltzmann model, uh, what really transformed transformed the entire results of this project mm. was uh, the uh, the modification we applied to. Uh, uh, the first, the top level, the lattice Boltzmann model. Mm. However, we didn't really um, change the calculation. We didn't really um, alter alter the model. We kept the model intact, but we just um, modified the algorithm of, of the original model a little bit and modified the data layout. Now, getting back to the modification, uh, if we were doing that with, uh, at the uh, at just some um, implementation level. We might be um, uh, doing some coding um, challenges like uh, doing um, intrinsics and so on. However, we didn't. We didn't really mm -hmm. apply intrinsics in, in, in these implementation. We applied vectorization by different uh, technology. And in fact, uh, we use uh, OpenMP. Uh, sometimes we use uh, Intel, uh, Intel until compiler optimizations also and vectorization, uh, parallelization. Some other times we have to uh, go through a number of experiments, uh, exposing a number of uh, technologies available in the market. So uh, at, at the end of the day, we, we found out a, a suitable combination of the uh, technology uh, implementation and which technology actually uh, would be, uh, have have resulted the best results. Um, in, in such implementation, such, I mean, uh, for example, uh, as I mentioned, if you if we were using and adopting the uh, intrinsics in order to up, uh, perform vectorization, at that case, it would really be uh, super difficult to uh, to develop and make a modification. It would be actually very expensive in terms of uh, uh, code uh, coding. And, I mean. Uh, it, it would be really uh, it would worth re-implementing all the way from the beginning rather than modifying uh, a code with intrinsics and uh, I mean uh, okay. would be very very intensive in this case. So uh, yes, the code is modifiable and 
at the moment, fortunately, we don't we do not have any bugs. Uh, but whenever a bug arises, we will be uh, able to uh, approach it and tackle it uh, and and fix it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Engineer Tavis. Thank you, Professor Zell, for your nice question. Uh, any questions? 